Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky. The Lakers keep rolling in Toronto, but they're not rolling up the standings. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everyone for making Locked on Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, no matter how or where you get your podcast. This one's always free and never behind a paywall. Locked on Lakers on YouTube is where over 23,000 subscribers are wondering which one of us is which again because we haven't done a show together in about a week. Um, and uh, the Lakers, Andy, they've regardless of which one of us has been hosting or with which guest or whatever it is, they keep winning. It's now seven of eight. They are now four and one on the road trip. Um, they are now, I want to say 19 and eight over their last 27 games. Um, after they beat Toronto 128 to 111 on Tuesday. Uh, this, of course, tonight is the final game of the trip. I would be lying, Andy, if I said I wasn't at least a tiny bit nervous about this game, given how poorly the Lakers have played, relatively speaking, against bad teams. And Toronto came into this game having lost 13 straight doesn't get worse than that they are an absolutely lousy team these raptors i mean particularly with no scotty barnes out for the season also missing Jakob pertel gary trent jr they they are moving in a different direction that will not be discovered whatever it is until barnes is back but in the meantime they look like a team that will not have a win anytime soon i was not particularly worried about it just somewhat because, by design you might say yeah <laughs> you know, like, i mean they they have they frankly have no productive reason to win right now nope. i was not particularly worried about them heading into this game just because yes i know this trend of them crap in the bed at times against bad competition but of late that has not been really a thing and it certainly has not been a thing on this road trip i remember Right before the game they had against Atlanta at home that was beginning a nine-game stretch that we had identified as the softest part of the impending schedule, it was right after the Golden State uh, loss that Anthony Davis got hurt during the, the eye injury. He couldn't finish, and the Lakers fell apart immediately after he left the game. I had said that seven and two would be the bare minimum the Lakers needed to go in order to attempt to move up in the standings, they have a very, very realistic, if not probable, chance after tonight of it being eight and one. Yep. And they still may not have made the headway that you were looking to, to take place because the rest of the West simply is not cooperating. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to that, um, you know, probably in the next segment. But, um, you are correct, and you know we're we're recording. You know the Lakers play early on Tuesday, so we're recording before the uh, the evening's games are done. Whether that's Golden State chasing the Lakers, uh, Clippers, Sacramento is obviously a big game for the Lakers to be watching as well. So we'll see what happens there. But um, it I, what I liked about this one, it's like you don't rah rah woohoo now. Okay, again, fourteen now losses that uh, straight losses. Um, for the Raptors, and if you think that their their frontline players in the starting lineup aren't very noteworthy, like they've got dudes on the bench that I, as a dedicated NBA follower, do not know who they are. Like I just not, I don't know these people. Um, and you know, so this is a team that you gotta gotta work. And you know, the Lakers got off to a little bit of a sluggish start. They weren't. They got off to a straight up. Awful start. Right. They I mean, were they terrible was not, for the, the first. first five minutes of the game were not great. But once they kind of got acclimated to, you know, the 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 Canadian air or whatever it was, they took control of the game. They had a little lull going into this into halftime, but they didn't they never gave up the lead once they took it. And what you want in a game like this, ultimately, however you get there, is one of those nights where the fourth quarter you see Colin Castleton and Maxwell Lewis and, you know, Max Christie and guys like that playing um, and no LeBron, no AD. And what the Lakers did is after halftime, they won the third quarter 36 to 21, completely dominated on both sides of the ball. 
And they were able to sit Anthony Davis for the entire fourth quarter. LeBron played about a minute and a half or two minutes of the, of the fourth. Everyone, um, save D'Angelo Russell, was under 30 minutes. LeBron played 29, and it was a, a – not all 29 – I'll say this. Not all 29 minutes are created equal. <laughs> he, was, nope. he was not you – know, I don't, it's not a criticism. He was not going 100% in this one, and he still got out of there in under uh, 30 minutes and still scored 23 points on 10 of 12 shooting. He's been very efficient lately. Uh, Anthony Davis played 28. Uh, Austin Reeves, who needs a sort of low-key, needs minutes um, you know, to, to rest. He only played 25. Um, and ultimately, this was exactly the type of game the Lakers needed heading into the final game of the road trip tonight against Washington in the second night of a back-to-back. You mentioned LeBron, and, and he really started steamrolling the Lakers through the second and third quarter and then just absolutely taking control of this game like in a way that they were not going to give up in the second quarter. There's a sequence where he had back-to-back lefty layups, four of six from the field for eight points, plus three assists against no turnovers. In the third quarter, he had nine points on three of three shooting from the field. And that was, I, I thought, the big catalyst for the Lakers just starting to completely dominate and put the game away. D'Lo led the team with 25 points. He was 7 of 14 from behind the arc. Uh, Jacob Rude, who uh, covers the Hoosiers for Locked On Hoosiers, but also contributes to Silver Screen and Roll, tweeted out, tonight was the sixth time in his Lakers career. D'Angelo Russell has hit seven three-pointers, tying him for third most in franchise history with Nick Van Exel. Only LeBron, eight, and Kobe, 12, have had more in a game. And Derek Fisher talked afterwards, a point that I've raised a lot over the season, like just the volume of threes from D'Lo matters a lot. When you're talking mm-hmm. about somebody who's, since the All-Star break, averaging over 42% on eight and a half, it's that at that point, it's not just the threat of D'Lo pulling up, it's the frequency of that threat. It's like how often you know he will pull up fearlessly. He does not care what defense you're throwing at him. And he doesn't take a lot of bad ones either. No. So it just it stretches out an offense permanently. And you combine that with other guys like Rui, since the All-Star break, is averaging almost 46% from three. He, in particular, I think could take another one or two per game easily. Mm-hmm. LeBron's having a career year from behind the arc. Torian Prince is still just a like a hair under 40% for the season. Like They are all of a sudden a team that can... You know, they've got defensive issues to clean up, and I don't know if they're capable of doing it, but offensively, they are all of a sudden a team that can really scramble a defense. Yeah, and it, it's it's interesting to, to, to you know, I, I was listening to Fish talk a little bit too after the game, and I was I was even watching, a, I forget, the, the, the kid on Oakland. He's not really a kid. I mean, he's an older college player, but that guy who ran Kentucky off the floor, um, he was talking about how their coach – like wants them taking a certain amount of quote unquote bad shots per game. And I think like in the three point era, especially you don't want, uh, you know, like a parade of early clock threes and, you know, pull up That's jumpers okay. and all that. So you don't want like those kinds of bad shots that tilt your defense in the wrong way, but a certain percentage of, let's like you say let's stretch the floor out let's move it we have to make people respect this part of our game you know like the the issue with the lakers from a, a from a shooting standpoint three points and like this was one of those nights where the lakers actually did bury a team from three and they don't always do that even when their percentages are good because they just don't generally take as many shots as the other team um and they're also piling up free throws and tonight uh, you know, Tuesday night, they only took 12 uh, free throws. They didn't need to get to the line. And Toronto was um, part of the reason they they didn't get the line. <laughs> Toronto was so bad in the interior, they couldn't even foul the Lakers <laughs> inside. Um, but the shooting is there. Like, this is a team that can shoot. There's no question about it. Um, we can talk a little bit about LeBron uh, out of the break and what his ability to shoot does. Um, but I am not concerned about this team's ability for whatever the postseason looks like, to hit three-pointers during the postseason. So we'll get to that next, and we'll get to this uh, thing you alluded to, Andy. Uh, Why can't the Lakers move up in the standings? That's next.
Locked on Lakers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and take that win home. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So... You know, you talk about LeBron and, you know, the shooting, they have the supporting guys around. Um, but the difference, and one of the things that I think gives the Lakers, and we talked about this with uh, Damon on Monday and Aaron Larsoul on Tuesday, if you're looking for things that make the Lakers different this year versus last, and I understand they had a long run in the, um, in the, uh, in the postseason last year. One of the differentiators, though, between last year and this year is LeBron and his ability to shoot. And he said, um, you know, after I believe it was Sunday's uh, win, that like this is one of those – the part of the reason he's been able to shoot better this year is he's, had, he's been healthier, he's had more time on the floor, he's been able to um, continue to stay, like, in shape with his shot. Like, he's been able to work on it and do all of his stuff. And also uh, just in rhythm. Right, that's what I'm saying. So he's over 42, he's over almost at 42% for the year. And that makes him a more viable scorer from the inside. Like the Lakers still ultimately are going to need to pound teams, get to the free throw line, earn points that way. But especially in the half court, when teams try to take um, you know, the, the Lakers transition game away from them, LeBron needs that three more now than he used to needs people to respect that three to be able to put the ball on the floor and get a step on players and get into the lane. Like it is really important and a major differentiator between last year and this year that LeBron is shooting as well as he is. Absolutely. And by the way, Darvin said that we may be seeing it tonight against the Wizards as well. A reminder of the Lakers playing the Wizards tonight, 4 p.m. Pacific time. I will be blunt, assuming the Lakers play their starters and nobody gets hurt there is no legitimate explanation for them losing this game at all. You can catch every Lakers game on the hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the S XM app. Search Lakers. Darvin said, "Tell that, tell that to the Bucks, though, Andy. By the way, who did lose to the Wizards uh, on Tuesday night? So whatever. I actually they, like that. I like that for the Lakers that they can walk in there and be like, hey, guys, Mil they just beat Milwaukee. Pay attention, and then they can go beat them by sure, twenty-five. But even by even through that lens, Milwaukee does not need the game as badly as the Lakers need. Oh no, it. there's still no excuse. I'm just saying. I, I right. just like the idea that sure. it it, it remind it's a reminder for the Lakers before the game starts. Right, but Darvin said after tonight's uh, after the Raptors win, he was not a hundred percent sure. Obviously, you have to see how guys feel, but he expected LeBron and AD both to play. Yeah. Tonight in DC, I it had never crossed my mind that AD wouldn't play, but that news with LeBron was nice to hear. Yeah, and it's and it's is in part you know it is a different deal. If the Lakers play with their food a little bit, and you know end up in some sort of you know down the stretch, it's a four point game with three minutes left, and LeBron's got to play thirty five or thirty six minutes, and not even the double overtime or something like that in Milwaukee. Um, that changes the complexion of the Washington game. The other thing that helps um, the Lakers is that not only do they play Washington on Wednesday and they can finish that trip 5-1, and one, um, which we really thought was what they needed to have on this trip. 4-2 and two, the minimum, 5-1 and one is really what they needed. Um, it, they don't play again until Saturday. They still have an extra day off before the Saturday-Sunday um, back to back, both of those games at home, but a, a difficult one, especially if Donovan Mitchell is available for Saturday's game against Cleveland and then Sunday against Minnesota. Um, I just, it's it's funny. Like you look at the standings, and the Lakers continue not to move. <laughs> they, they have I, again. I think they're nineteen and eight in their last twenty seven games. It has moved them. I think maybe from the ten to the nine, uh, depending on when you hit the calendar. But over their last ten games. 
they still have only gained a game on Golden State and Sacramento and Phoenix, who, who are playing pretty well despite that brutal schedule. Um, and you know, New Orleans and all these, none of these teams are cooperating. And it makes it feel like they're not necessarily making progress. But the flip side is, Andy, this team is now 10 games over 500. They should be 11 games over 500 by the end of, of tonight and will probably finish anywhere from 10 to 12 games over. That's despite that god-awful stretch after the, the IST. Like, they're not, I wouldn't put them in with like the elite teams in the West. But last year, 10, 12, 13 games over 500, you were like a four seed. You were so, a four seed. Right. I'm looking like, at it right now. Phoenix was 12 games above 500 last year. They were a four seed. That, and granted, that was a, a soft year record wise in, in the West. But like they're, they're objectively a pretty good team at this point. Like 10 games over 500, you're a pretty good team. Like, so like, you have to look at my point. I guess you sort of have to look at different look for different signposts now because the standings aren't a good metric anymore. The problem is there's just a lot of really good teams in the West. I mean, it the Lakers may very well find themselves unable to move out of the nine seed and quite possibly lose one of two games to get themselves into the play in simply because losing one of two games, particularly playing two good teams. That happens. Like that's yep. not unusual. The timing of it will just be really bad for the Lakers. Now, to be clear, it is still not impossible for them to get to that eight seed. They're right now only a game and a half behind Phoenix uh, for the seven seed, and they're only a game behind Sacramento. Right. So pending, depending... pending Sacramento's result on Tuesday, and to be clear, a game behind Sacramento functionally serves as two because they have to pass them clean, and then. This really, I you know, Trevor Lane is a friend of the show. We like him a lot. Does great work over at Lane. He made me very upset on on uh, Tuesday because he tweeted out, "You know what happens if the Lakers Lakers have the tiebreaker over the Suns, the Kings have the tiebreaker over the Lakers, and I, I forget how it works with the Phoenix and, and and Sacramento. If all three of these teams end up tied, which very well could happen, um, the Lakers could catch." Phoenix, but if Phoenix is still tied with Sacramento at that point, the Lakers lose that whole tiebreaker in their third. It goes to like some sort of like combined record thing with all three teams together. And because the Lakers simply cannot beat Sacramento, they end up in third in a three-way tie with those teams. And I was just like, Trevor, come on. Don't that just feels totally wonky. Like what? Like why are they being penalized against the Phoenix piece of this? Like they... They it's a, it, 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 you add up all the games together against all the teams. I was just like, so like all of the things that that make it hard for the Lakers to move up are lined up to make it hard for the Lakers to move up. Um, so the nine seed, if you have to pick a place where the Lakers are going to finish, the, the the it's probably well over fifty percent chance that it's going to be the nine seed. Look, heading into this season, when you know, you know, among the many things that we were talking about, like big questions heading into the year, you know, the question of load management for LeBron. And, you know, people were often framing that through the prism of the 65 game minimum in order to qualify for all NBA. And how much would LeBron care about something like that? How much would Anthony Davis care about something like that? And my response was always, I, I think this is a non issue because the West is too competitive this year for the Lakers to just be sitting these guys mm -hmm. for the sake of just rest. Like, I mean, rest that you're doing purely preventative, precautionary, as opposed to, no, we are resting this guy yeah. because he's dealing with something sure. specific. Or, it, you know, LeBron, LeBron, when he's been getting these rests during these back-to-backs, it's because he is dealing with a specific ankle injury that probably is connected to the one that he was dealing with in the playoffs last year. It's yeah. all part of these feet issues. So there's I mean, I will say there's a counterfactual in there somewhere on earth three where the Lakers are, you know, the three seed right now where I actually do think we'd probably see a little bit more rest, but your point broadly, I think is, is, absolutely you know what we, I'm sure whenever this season ends, you know, one of the many things that will be talked about, we've talked about it on this show many times, and it won't be the last, 
the idea of how this team looks had Darvin Ham had just played the more sensible lineups, whether starting, rotations, whatever, once he had a full complement of players available. I don't disagree that that would have positively affected the Lakers, and it's something that Darvin has to account for. But I also think people often break this down too simplistically because I don't think it's quite as clean a, a counterfactual as people. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not just talking about no, I know Darwin's choice. I just mean if the Lakers were the three seed right now, I do think they'd be finding ways as well they should have been. Like this, but like, look, and this is the frustrating part about the season generally is like you can't undo right. what they've already done. Like that, that you can't go back and fix the parts that they've already screwed up. You can't make the first. 40 games more productive um you know we were all screaming about how important a good start was um and it did not happen and like everything that's happened since then is a consequence to some degree of their lack of flexibility that they gave themselves some of it is self-inflicted some of it is bad luck they have had injury problems they've had other stuff you know they've lost a lot of games to a lot of players and just because those games don't belong to lebron and ad doesn't mean that they're not important because they've exposed flaws in the roster. Come back in the, for the last segment. I want to. I want to kind of get a feel for like where you think they are because you know tomorrow or tonight's going to be you know tomorrow's show is going to be about another game and we're talking about that. So I'm just curious, like how much different do you feel about the team despite the fact that they are still the nine? We'll get to it next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV, providing access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. We have a Fire TV stick in our kitchen TV, so we have all these options now while you're making meals, stuff like that. It's awesome. Whether it's the opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And that includes us at Locked On, plus the big pro leagues, college conferences. There's also news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. You're going to enjoy it. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Before the last thing before we get to the you know the question I wanted to ask you, like the the standings, like the, the, you know, again, not to, to to you know to to promote Trevor's work, but every day, you know, we're all watching the standings. A lot of people put out like what's good for the Lakers, here's what you want today. And the Lakers are obviously trying to move up. And they're also two things are happening at once. The Lakers are trying to move up, and they're also trying to avoid Denver. Well, um, how this plays out, you know, it could end up where the Lakers are lucky to finish in that what will be the eight seed, because right now, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, and Denver are essentially in a three-way tie for you know pending Tuesday's results for the top spot in the West. Like all of these things could change. Meanwhile, the Lakers are jostling around. So like they could end up moving up and losing out because then they still get Denver in the first round. They could lose out by being the you know the lower seed but win because they get a better matchup against Oklahoma City or or Minnesota. It is just a crazy, crazy moment in an incredibly competitive Western conference. Um, but I personally feel like other than Denver and even Sacramento, like in a real series, I'm nervous because Lakers has just been so bad against them. But Monk is, you know, will miss an, an early playoff series. He will absolutely be out. Kevin Herter's out for the year. It's a different team. Other than Denver, I'm not saying I would pick the Lakers straight up against any of those teams. But I wouldn't put their odds of beating anyone at less than like forty percent. You know, Minnesota, the team like you know that like 
60 40 against the, the the top seed in the like that's that's where i am i don't know if you agree yeah pretty much i mean i'm less optimistic than you are with the sacramento part of it just because we've seen them struggle against sacramento for the exact same reasons every time, every time. <laughs> all of which involve anthony davis yeah. and if anthony davis does not have a good series i can promise you the lakers are going to lose like they 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 cannot win a series against a good team if Anthony Davis is getting outplayed in every game. Yeah. And he has been getting outplayed by DeMontis Sabonis roughly since DeMontis Sabonis entered the league. So that that is that is a troubling trend. <laughs> it is um <laughs> like I mean that that I mean when you when you put it that way, so, sure it seems yeah. no. worse. I don't like them in a matchup against Sacramento at all. I don't even think necessarily Sacramento is a better bet to go further in the playoffs. Like if you matched up everybody against everybody, did some big projection, whatever. I don't even think Sacramento is necessarily better equipped to go further than the Lakers. No. They just are a bad matchup for the Lakers. I, 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 maybe I'm overrating the Monk thing. I just think that's a huge loss. It is a big deal, but the Lakers aren't going to face Sacramento in the first round anyway. So no, it, it, it would be the play-in or nothing. So that's right. that's true. I mean, right. in the, if they get to a first round, it will be against Minnesota, Oklahoma City, or Denver. Yeah. And two of those three teams, at least, I Absolutely. give the Lakers a, a decent chance of winning. I asked Aaron... Uh, for for Tuesday show, straight up Lakers, you know, versus Oklahoma City in the first round. Who do you pick? He picked the Lakers. I, mean, I picked I, the I Lakers. Think you would too. Yeah, I'm saying this. I've been saying this all season. They match up well against Oklahoma City. I don't think OKC's. I don't think those wins against OKC are fluky. They make sense when you break down why they've been happening. OKC may also be a team better equipped on balance to go further than the Lakers in the playoffs. They've certainly been better than the Lakers all season. The Lakers are just a bad matchup for them. Like mm -hmm. this is going to be a year where matchups really become a styles make fights thing. You know, you asked, you know, how do I feel about the Lakers during this stretch? What I learned about them, whatever, like it's been a lot of confirmation bias. Like right now they've been very consistent for the most part, win or lose they are an extremely deadly and potent offense with defensive issues that at times they find ways to either paper over or crank up in ways that can be effective depending on what the matchup is and if it's right. one that the lakers can do well with they, they've had a good run of defending uh top end guards and that could obviously become a big deal in some of these matchups but they're going to be a team that has to, for the most part, outscore their opponents. Like they have not come up with regularly reliable defense in no. quite some time. And I think that's going to be extremely difficult to come up with on a regular basis if Vando isn't available. And I think, I mean, this is everything you talk about with the Lakers, you know, they were down to seven games. So, I mean, if, if Vanderbilt returns, and I believe he had a, a pretty rigorous on, on court workout over the weekend, um, you know, so. I mean, signs are pointing to the potential availability, but we are running out of time for him to become something more than available. And you sort of hope you can squeeze out 10 to 15 minutes of good play or something like that. Like for Vanderbilt to be in the form that he was in when he was playing at his best before the second injury is going to require more time than the Lakers have. Um, but I will say this. I'd take I, 15 I, minutes of them, though, man. Oh, I would are you kidding? 15, it would have such yeah. a profound impact yes. on the road. There's no question. Yeah. I would, too. You can get 15 minutes of Vando. Awesome. Give it to me. I'll, I'll take it. What I, what I think, though, I, where the Lakers, I think, give themselves a chance is they're not a good defensive team. But the, the fact that they can be so good offensively, and they are capable, I think, particularly if they are running well offensively and running efficiently offensively, of setting themselves up to, can you play, can you get half a quarter, you know, seven a seven-minute stretch where the Lakers can, can clamp down a little bit defensively and open some space. And look, if you open up a lead, the Lakers are almost surely going to give it up. But to where they're not in a position all the time where they have to, they're down by 12, and you have to not only score relentlessly, you got to get stops relentlessly. That's not a great place for the Lakers to have to be. Worked out against Milwaukee coming down, down, you know, down from 19 and all that. 
But I do think this offense, particularly when LeBron is shooting well and you've got D'Lo now and Rui's stat line is legit and AR has been much better, you know, they're capable of overwhelming teams. And if they can be that consistent offensive force, now you're you're not go- the, the Golden State in the heyday. We, you know, Aaron and I were talking about this for today's show. It's not exactly the same thing, but one of the things that no, Golden that State, team was really good on defense, right? But I'm just saying, <laughs> I just mean, I, but I'm saying offensively, and the Lakers aren't as good as that team was offensively. It's it's no, but but the when, gap when was you was have way a team defensively, though, it right. was a way bigger. They were, they were a way better team. They were one of the greatest teams of all time. But my the the point of the point of comparison here is when you have an offense that can be really really good. And you have in your and teams know that, and they know that you're going to have to kind of score to keep up. Those three or four minute stretches of really good defense can put extra pressure on a team. And again, the Lakers aren't that good offensively; they're not the the heyday Warriors, and they're certainly not as good as those teams were defensively. But if if they can lean into that offensive identity to a certain degree um, and be really good on that side. It does put pressure on the other teams to score with them, which can gunk up your offense in big ways. You can get sped up. Here's what it's just going to come down to, in all honesty. Don't turn the ball over. Yes. If they, if they can manage to avoid turning the ball over, playing this level of offense, and A, not giving their other team that is trying to outscore them extra possessions, or B, not putting themselves – in transition situations where their defense is at their absolute worst and you know they become more vulnerable for giving up offensive rebounds which is still an issue for them like that i think is ultimately going to be the best way for them to save their defense moving forward again they can they have shown themselves even during this period of cranking it up for like five minute spurts or often cranking it up when it matters the, the most. Third quarter, third quarter on Tuesday was a great example. At twenty-one points, the Raptors suck, but thirty, you know, twenty-one points in a quarter. Fourth quarter against Brooklyn, you know, like those those were dominant defensive stretches against bad but, teams, but dominant. Right. But that's ultimately what it's going to be. It's going to be stop yep. turning the ball over. If they manage to do that, they are going to be, I think, good enough offensively to make. A lot of teams struggle to keep up. If they give those other teams opportunities, those opportunities may very well come back to bite them in the ass. Um, Wanted to point out really quick before we go, just because I think it's worth noting, because he was a championship Laker, Rajon Rondo has officially announced that he will be retiring. Right. Um, Which I, I, to be honest with you, he's been out of league for two years now. I thought he already had, but he never said anything out loud, I guess. Look, he hadn't said anything out loud, and... You know, Dwight Howard still makes it clear I would come back if someone would have me. Demarcus Cousins makes it clear I would have it come back if someone would have me. So you yeah. never. Rondo is like it was asked the question, "Would you come back? Are you done?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm done. I can't do yeah. this anymore." Exactly. And so, but I think it's always noteworthy when guys make it clear I'm not looking yeah. to come back. He was obviously a member of the 2020 championship team. LeBron after the game talked about you know he's asked about Rondo. He said that he's one of the best players he's ever played with. Talked about the basketball IQ, uh, the competitiveness when he used to go up against him during those days when he was in when Rondo was in Boston and LeBron was either with Cleveland or Miami in playoff battles. And he said also that two things that jumped out at me. One, that Rondo used to say to him all the time that if they ever teamed up, they'd win a championship. Obviously, he was correct. But also that Rondo got everything out of his career that he could. Oh, God, and I think yeah. that's I think that's true. And I always think that's awesome when it happens. Yeah, you know how you know the 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 amount of respect that I have for guys who are you know as little as Rondo is you know six foot one, uh, long arms, but six foot one to be able to last in the league as long as he did, you got to be special in in a bunch of different ways, and he obviously was. So congratulations to him for a phenomenal career. Locked on Lakers on YouTube, it's where you can go hang out with over twenty three thousand subscribers, uh, all of whom are. Anticipating a win tonight, Andy, and uh, to the chance to look forward to a really good uh, weekend of games for the Lakers, Cleveland, and Minnesota. Uh, and uh, we will see everyone tomorrow.